everybody. I am so glad to start this early morning for your part of the world uh, with my talk in this beautiful conference. Um, first of all, I'm really glad to, to know that some people I know already will participate who helped so much for us to start uh, the flotation history in Russia. It was over 12 years ago and uh, with great love and warmth. I remember these contacts in the US who helped that for Shoshana Liebner and Dan and Lee and Barry, whom I talked to. Without their support, it won't be able to, to realize here. And now the, our flotation story is already on certain stage better than it was before, in spite of pandemic problem. Uh, so uh, here in Russia, we have um, already plenty of centers appeared. Actually, we have a community and we have uh, um, our meetings, also annual meetings. Last year, we had a first international conference in Moscow and uh, Ashkan and Graham visited us. We were very happy to see them here. So today is a the next step for us to feel ourselves integrated to the global community. And I think, yes, uh, coronavirus is a big problem, but same time, at the other hand, it helps to, uh, for us to, to feel us connected, which is, which is great. I will start my short presentation. And after that, my colleagues will continue our Russian block of uh, presentations. They will be free presentations. Uh, first will be uh, dedicated more to psychological aspects of uh, work with flotation in the context of uh, coronavirus. Uh, the next one will be more about uh, medical aspect of that, especially immune system. And then our uh, great friend and brilliant scientist in the field of sport, Jan, will uh, share his opinion and vision how flotation can be better used and integrated with the uh, work with athletes. He's very keen in that. Uh, there is a chat. I won't be able right now to, to see it and uh, reply fast, but uh, I will definitely uh, send all the replies later in the message box. So I'll start the presentation. And um, again, it's a great pleasure to participate in the conference and feel it's really global this time. Uh, today, I would like to share that uh, the world is a little changed, or maybe not a little, and we need to face it, cope it, and learn how to stay in balance and not to lose this beautiful uh, center of cyclone uh, stage, which was um, named by John Lilly in his book. And uh, we meet the special needs and special, special cases uh, when we work with people uh, at our float center. And we try different things, how to be more efficient and to be more answering, the de satisfying their demands. So I will, uh, I'm also a psychologist and I work in the paradigm of transactional analysis altogether this uh, with the emotional focus therapy. And it's interesting how to combinate this kind of techniques uh, in work with uh, flotation experience. I'll show it a little bit. So first of all, first of all, it seems that my slides are not being listed correctly. <laughs> Sorry about this delay. Hmm. Yeah, technical things. And yeah, wow. Uh oh, I'm not sure what's going on. So for me, it will be the personal way to practice my calmness and stay relaxed in this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm not sure that I will be able right now to share with you this presentation. If it will not happen that way, I will do it using my phone. 
uh, some stage, maybe I not clicked on keynote. No, I'm, I'm sharing oh, okay. something, something short. Uh, all right. So definitely we see that um, there is a global increase of anxiety and depression all over the world because of the coronavirus. It was increasing even before coronavirus, but now this process is double at least and uh, it creates the special tension and atmosphere that we should consider. I have a few statistic data from your part of the world, uh, from the US, and comparing to other periods so last year, we see that this uh, increase is very significant. Um, pretty sure that you meet it also every day in your flow senses when you work with the people. I'll try to change the slide. Hope it will work better now. Yeah. And it's not only the feeling and self-reporting people that uh, they're more depressed and uh, they have less emotional and psychological stability, but uh, the sales of uh, medications to cope with uh, this kind of problems also indicate that uh, this problem is strong and big and um, anti-anxiety medication increased uh, for almost 35 percent which is which is a lot so people trying to do something with their attention and with uh, their fears and uh, here with uh, medication is not that popular i know that in recent 10 years the market of uh, antidepressants and this kind of medications in the us uh, grown for 400 percent 400 percent that's amazing we don't have it here and it have both side good and bad uh, good that people still trying to find more ecological uh, and holistic ways to get rid of stress like floating but another thing we don't have much of efficient methods to help people to stay more balanced and in harmony so uh, we meet it in society. We, ha we see the growing amount of aggression and um, people are actually quite scared. Considering the specific groups, uh, this uh, unsafe environment is more difficult for, for groups that were already on unstable or didn't find the support to cope with the modern reality. And pregnant women and new mothers are also showing growing uh, level of anxiety and, and depression. And these people are also coming to our center. So we're especially glad that we can help to specific groups that need our support. Talking about uh, the statistics, statistics in Russia, actually we have less uh, official data than you have in internet about US market, for example. But still we see that uh, most of the people, not less than 71%, which is a lot, uh, are in a state of uh, anxiety and they think that the problem didn't pass yet and expecting worse times than it was before. Recently, in 2000, this year actually, 2020, um, relatively big study was uh, issued by uh, Russian scientists from the university in Penza, which is a city in Siberia, and they, they investigated the growing uh, fear of uh, of uh, coronavirus which is uh, growing in uh, Russia and neighbor countries, for example, the Belarus. And uh, 850 participants were in this study. A different education level, different uh, social areas and, and groups, but in general we see that uh, the increase of fear of COVID is big, it is growing, and comparing to Belarus, for example, in Russia, it's even bigger. So it's good. Hopefully, the Belarusian nation is better prepared for the things they need to pass right now, which is 
definitely hopeful. Uh, talking about the gender uh, description here, we see that uh, females are more affected by this fear of COVID than male at our side of the world, which is also helping us to focus on uh, uh, our clients, female clients, and uh, put more attention to work with them. What's going on? Um, the pandemic atmosphere is very specific. It's uh, something new for people. And the problem is, the, the specific problem, that this enemy cannot be seen. It's invisible. And you're on the street, you're contact with people, more or less, and you cannot estimate where the danger is. You cannot figure out uh, whom to avoid, are you infected or not, and many things like that. And this um, complicates the ability to use the common sense and uh, develop the rational things to be protected and feel more safe. This atmosphere of invisible enemy, which is everywhere, but you can see it, creates a special tension and fear in society. And since it's impossible to rationally deal with that, uh, then some new systems appear and it brings people to the increase of the magical thinking. So we see that a lot of conspiracy and new theories like 5G, uh, communication and uh, influence and many, many, many things that we meet here uh, put people to even worse position because they trying to lose uh, this support on a, on a common sense. And uh, yes, it brings more people to flotation. <laughs> you know that our auditorium is very wide and a huge part of it is very interesting and strange people in a way. Uh, but uh, this rational thinking is very important to feel orientated and safe. So we need to compensate this invisible enemy to uh, offer people more transparent and clear uh, and rational support, which we do in our center. Actually, this invisible enemy already, uh, we know this kind of reactions in the past in 80s and 90s when uh, we met this nuclear fear. The radiation is also invisible and there were a lot of myths, different kind, explaining what can happen with the planet, uh, the feel of permanent danger, unexpected danger. So it's invisible, it's unpredictable and it's lethal. And these things increase tension a lot. So we have a question, how to feel more safe in this environment and to avoid, avoid panic, but amount of panic attacks are growing. And it's important here to understand that uh, it's totally impossible to have any kind of solid control of the situation. You really, no matter how smart you are, how rich you are, uh, are you trained or not, will not help you to be totally safe because this environment is unpredictable. And yes, we're here and I think you too, waiting for the second and third and maybe more waves of uh, increase of this uh, coronavirus activity. So it's important to understand that through control, we can bring ourselves to uh, the uh, balanced and relaxed state. We need to find other things to work with, our psychological aspects more than controlling the outer reality. And I would like to focus on the, uh, the thing named self-trust, trust to one's ability to find the solution in this unpredictable reality. That brings me to one of my favorite psychologists, whom I like a lot, uh, the Eric Erickson who offered the term, the basic trust, which is uh, very early, formed or not, uh, along the 
human development. He said it happens in very early ages, just for postpartum from zero to one year old. And it gives you a feeling that environment is safe, supporting, and the green light for the person is on. So a person feels that he can go and get a nice life with realization, achievements, and success with support of ours. Or the opposite thing is when an environment is dangerous and you should be prepared to protect yourself from the environment. And it gives totally different mode of existence. Here, obviously, we cannot say that uh, environment is safe, especially during the pandemic. But it's important not to lose this basic trust, not to environment, but to our ability to cope with that. And here, we see that there are different approaches to the upbringing and um, I know more about Russian culture, but uh, pretty sure that it's bigger or less is presented all over the globe. Even when we have the nice family, supporting family who care about children, the parents are playing important role in this uh, growing up process. And it forms the certain attitude toward ourselves when we already grown up, when we are adults. We uh, have this kind of internalization of the attitude that our parents showed to us in our childhood. We have this attitude uh, inside us toward ourselves when we are already adult. And here, uh, even the, when family is supporting, still there are important aspects that uh, is not so easy to, to handle with. Uh, I use uh, with my work with clients here and what I can, want to offer to you as also an instrument, the Eric Byrne, uh, very simple structure of parent, adult and child. Uh, Byrne, Eric Byrne tested it all, it all over the globe and uh, there were clinical uh, tests as well and myself I had a chance last year to work with the Chinese uh, group of uh, patients in uh, Beijing and saw that uh, the principles of contextual analysis are working very well there too. So when uh, our parents giving us support and they create our position, our ego state as Eric Byrne called it the parents stay inside us. And uh, the question is giving us support, not only controlling, uh, but giving support. Uh, this kind of upbringing creates with us trust to our ability when we are alone, with the, when we have no outer control to trust our, do we trust ourselves that we can find the best solution? that we will not be dead of hunger or something else or coronavirus and we'll do all possible with all our power and skills and this is enough for us to be safe. Of course there is no uh, warranty that it, it, it definitely will happen but the feeling that we can do all is necessary what we can in these circumstances uh, is enough is very important to feel not uh, uh, stressed and uh, avoid the fear. When we work with the clients, I will not explain in details what is this uh, parent, adult and child system. I think you know it pretty well already. If not, I will direct you to Eric Byrne uh, books. I can send you the links about that. But for us, the most important is cultivate and develop this, this feeling of the client that he really can do his best and it will be enough for the best behavior in this difficult environment. When the client comes to us, uh, we are working with him from the position of the nursing parent and offer him the play, child, child, child play. So we're not talking about the 
situation in the country, the risks, the danger, the current rates, and these kind of things, which is about adult. No, we give support to his inner child, the natural child, that he is really is doing well, that he is really a nice person, no matter who he is, what are his achieve, achievements and so on. So we're sending him this uh, joy to meet him with the, uh, with the uh, idea that um, he is accepted. And same time, in a very informal way, we play with him a little bit, bringing the child energy to this communication. In this uh, structure, it supports his uh, inner child due to, uh, due to uh, the lack of depression from, from the feared controlling parent. And then, starting this process, we offer him to continue that during the float session. So we want him to focus on certain things when he will be in the tank. I will remind that he's, he came with a fear and tension and we need to somehow to switch his process to a totally different one. We want his nutriting parent to support his natural child when he will be in the tank, especially in the beginning. And we found that this kind of dynamic helps him to, to go deeper to the uh, flotation experience and relaxation mode. Literally, we give him instruction to praise himself, to tell himself in words when he is in a tank that it's so great to be myself without any efforts, without any terms, and to enjoy this, this sensation, letting him go as he is without any efforts. The position like, well done, you're doing well from the inner nutrition parent to his natural child. It might sound very, very simple and even silly. And Eric Byrne, when he created this system, he said that he will put this in words um, for eight year old child can understand it. So that's why in spite it's simple, <laughs> it really works. And it leads to uh, the deep feeling of letting go and increase of self-trust along the flotation. Then, the person has experience in a tank as he has. We respect a lot this uh, important state of John Lilly and uh, that I heard from Lee Perry and, uh, 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 that, uh, and from Shoshana that we shall not uh, anyhow construct or direct the flotation experience of the person. It's his own sacred and private thing. But this start we found in these circumstances is working very well for person to go deeper to, to good floating experience. When the person comes out, it's important to support the state that he achieved. And we created this special zone, like a buffer zone in our center, where we meeting the client and in the terms of transactional analysis, give him the support of his trust of himself that he just, uh, that, that he achieved along the, this session. And it's important to, to make a bridge between the flotation tank to our buffer zone and then from the, our buffer zone to the city. Then the person goes to the world like this. Actually, this is our aim. This is what we want for a person to, to feel when he goes out. Uh, like this boy, he is running to live, you know, he, he wants to live further and he is not thinking about, oh, maybe there are cars on the road, maybe it's dangerous, I don't know, uh, the weather can change or something else. No, it, it is a feeling that maybe it's not safe, but I am ready. I can do what I want. I want to live with joy and, and interest and pleasure. But uh, there is a question, how it can be realized? To say in words is not easy. And then we found that it can be a quite interesting paradigm to work with the client using the words, not as a main instrument, 
to make the setting of the client, but to use our mirror neurons and focus our work on that. So we use a lot of empathy, acceptance, and we give no scripts for our staff to uh, communicate with the clients. Otherwise, it goes to very official money, service, and that's it. No, we change it totally. Uh, so your center is as efficient as your staff. Inner state is good. And uh, it's, of course, more difficult to organize, but uh, we see it's possible to make when uh, we make the uh, difference between staff and not staff, our clients almost disappeared. Uh, same things, empathy, acceptance, and no, no script. What we practice here with our, our staff, we respect, uh, and we support this inner child stage of our uh, staff. Not only staff, actually, for myself too, I have a lot of support for our team. Uh, and uh, this is interesting aspect. Uh, we see that people here start to feel that they're not in a normal one of many uh, centers uh, where they give, uh, to have different services. But it gives uh, another thing. It gives uh, the reinforcement of internal support. And they use us like a base to bring themselves to this uh, internal support with the environment we appreciate it and can provide. And we see that it, uh, it is reflected in our results. The amount of people who return to us after the first flotation sessions, uh, session is growing uh, up to 25% and we're growing more. Uh, maybe it's not that big, maybe it has bigger, but uh, we appreciate this result. And we will keep focusing our work on this approach to share the state, what we can, what we do our best to keep in ourselves and share it with the clients and use flotation as an instrument to make it uh, uh, assimilated by, uh, by a person. So uh, uh, just giving a few words in the end. Uh, yes, the world is not safe. It's obvious, but what we can do is we can trust and focus that we can, we have an ability to cope with that, do our best, and then to help others with that. So thank you, everybody. Hope it will be, it will be uh, useful for you. Uh, I will be happy to see your inputs and questions. And uh, yeah, I wish everybody and myself too self-trust and confidence. Thank you so much. Thank you.